The KXAN News Podcast is sponsored by Shelf Genie. Texas lawmakers making strides to expand access to medical marijuana. Details on the new bill being considered by the Texas House. An outrage among students at a West Texas university over the president's decision to cancel a drag show. How students have taken new action beyond protesting on campus. Low humidity and sunny skies after this morning's rain. We'll talk about your weekend forecast coming up. Well, thousands of Texans living with chronic pain are hoping lawmakers at the Texas Capitol can provide them with some relief in the form of marijuana. Thanks for joining us. I'm Daniel Mudding. And I'm Jennifer Sanders. Our Ryan Chandler joins us live from the state capitol with those efforts to expand how many have legal access to marijuana. Ryan. Well, that's right. This week, representatives of both parties on the Texas House Committee on Public Health voted unanimously to advance a bill which would expand the Texas Compassionate Use Program. So today, I got an inside look into one of Texas's only medical cannabis facilities right here in Austin to see how those changes could help. Medical cannabis is a life-saving medicine. Millions of patients have now seen relief. We believe Texas and Texans deserve that same access. Tucked away in a high-tech lab just south of Austin is Texas's leader in compassionate cultivation. Texas Original nurtures these plants not for a high, but for health care. And as you see, the glistening trichomes that hold all the potential cannabinoids for our patient's medicine. We're seeing a, a density of the bud itself forming. We've got these colas that begin to flush out and really begin to show uh, you know, the beauty of the crop, you know, the, the fruit of our labor coming out here. This facility is one of only two of its kind in Texas, producing cannabis that tens of thousands of Texans rely on as a natural treatment to chronic illness. This week, the Texas House made progress in a bipartisan effort to expand the program throughout the state. A lot of people are using it. Of course, we're making criminals out of them, uh, and uh, th that just needs to stop. House Bill 1805 would expand the list of eligible conditions to include anyone with chronic pain. It would also increase how much THC can be in the medicine. Texas Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller has long been a proponent for this kind of crop. This drug is much safer than hydrocodone, oxycotton, amphetamines, you know, all the narcotics that we prescribe, that doctors prescribe. We're not asking for recreational marijuana, we're just asking to, to help people. But today, few Texans can find that help. Texas is one of the last very large population centers that doesn't have broad access to medical cannabis. So we feel it's really important to build out this state. Now that bill is still waiting on a date to be considered by the full House of Representatives. It does have a good shot to pass in that chamber, but then it'll head over to the Senate. Still unclear at this point how it will fare there. For now at the Capitol, I'm Ryan Chandler, KXAN News. All right, thank you very much. And going in depth, the number of Texans using medical marijuana is growing. Last year, a Texas DPS commission expanded the Compassionate Use Program to accommodate those growing numbers. Now, last year, the number of patients prescribed marijuana rose from 18,000 in January to 43,000 in December. And so far this year, the number of patients has grown to over 47,000. Expect to see more traffic along I-35 this weekend. Former President Donald Trump will be in Waco tomorrow. He's planning to give a speech at the airport in the evening, and supporters from all over the area are expected to attend. I have a large gathering on a national scale. It showcases our ability as a city, um, as city staff, and also different agencies throughout the county and the state that we come together as a team to provide a safe gathering place for the public. And the city is expecting close to 15,000 people at the rally. KXAN will be there. You can tune in for our coverage or join us online at KXAN.com. First warning weather with Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans. Well, it's after 5 o'clock. What a pleasant, wonderful afternoon and evening it will be. Beautiful shimmering waters and completely cloudless skies over Lake Travis. It's really warm, but this is not a humid 84 degrees on the Oasis Cam at Lake Travis. It's a dry heat, as they say. 22% humidity in Austin, close to 10% in parts of the Hill Country. This is a byproduct of those west winds that blew in after this morning's rain. 
This morning's rain, always welcome, but look at this. All of our totals were under a quarter of an inch, most of them under a tenth of an inch. The heaviest we saw was near Richland Springs, 23 hundreds out in the hill country. Radar is obviously completely dry now. That same storm, though, is producing tornado warnings and a significant risk of strong tornadoes in the deep south, places like Arkansas and Louisiana tonight. Coming up in your forecast, much cooler weekend mornings, how long the humidity stays dry and low like this, and also when a few showers may return during your weekend plans. All right, David, thank you very much. President Biden addressed the Canadian Parliament today as part of a jam-packed visit to our northern neighbors. Now, this is the president's first trip to Canada as Commander-in-Chief. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington with more. <laughs> A warm welcome as President Biden makes his first visit to Canada, standing shoulder to shoulder with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, taking part in critical meetings and addressing Canada's parliament. Americans and Canadians are two people, two countries, in my view, sharing one heart. Our border is no longer just the place where we meet each other. It's the place where we will meet the moment. The two countries share the same goal of stemming the flow of migrants crossing their borders illegally. The Biden administration touting a new joint effort to address this issue. The agreement allows each country to turn away asylum seekers who cross the northern border without authorization. Since we created dedicated pathways in the United States, the number of migrants arriving on our southern border has dropped precipitously. And I commend Canada for stepping up with a similar program. While illegal crossings into the U.S. from Canada have climbed to historically high levels, it's just a fraction of what's happening at the U.S.-Mexico border. Republicans blame the Biden administration for the influx there and other challenges. That fentanyl and illegal drugs are flowing across the southern border and they want to know why more isn't being done to stop it. During the president's visit, the two leaders are tackling a variety of issues, including climate change, the war in Ukraine, and rising tensions with China. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. And as part of the agreement between the U.S. and Canada, Canada will offer 15,000 slots for migrants to apply to enter the country legally. Austin ISD celebrated Pride this week, putting on Pride-themed activities leading up to a big event tomorrow. The school district has celebrated Pride Week on campus for years now. Tomorrow's bash features a keynote speaker, food trucks, and a student dance. Eliza Loyola, the principal of Menchaca Elementary School, says celebrating the week is especially important here in Central Texas. It's actually not about the event or even the week. It's about the things that we do every day to message to our students and our families and our staff that they have a place and space within our school and within our community. Bills are being looked at in the Texas legislature targeting LGBTQ events and instruction in schools. Texas House Representative Jared Patterson tweeted that Austin ISD's Pride celebration was wildly inappropriate and a Pride indoctrination for students. AISD says it has not received any negative feedback from parents about the events. An asteroid set to pass by Earth this weekend. How close will it come and the best way for you to see it? A recall from two major car manufacturers, why the vehicles could catch fire and how many vehicles are affected. Get your telescopes ready because an asteroid is expected to pass close to Earth this Saturday. NASA says the object will pass within just 100,000 miles of Earth. Now this asteroid measures between 140 feet and 310 feet in diameter. It will be closest to Earth at 251 in the afternoon Saturday, but the best time to get a good look at it will be early this evening looking southeast. Hyundai and Kia are telling the owners of more than half a million SUVs and minivans in the U.S. to park them outdoors and away from buildings. That's because the tow hitch harnesses can catch fire while parked and while on the road. The Korean automakers say that water can get into a circuit board causing a short. The recalls affect the 2019 to 2023 Santa Fe, the 2021 to 2023 Santa Fe Hybrid, the 2022 to 2023 Santa Fe Plug-in Hybrid, and the 2022 to 2023 Santa Cruz. Now, the only Kia affected is the Carnival minivan from 2022 and 2023. Last year, Hyundai recalled a quarter of a million other SUVs for a similar problem.
Well, you never know who you might who might be serving you your next cup of Starbucks coffee. Starbucks new CEO Laxman Narasimham says he plans to don an apron and then get behind the counter to work as a barista once a month. He says he wants to stay connected to the coffee giant's culture and the customers. The announcement comes at a rocky time for the company's relationship with its baristas. As of Friday, more than 190 company-owned Starbucks locations voted to unionize. That's according to the National Labor Relations Board data and workers have cited unsafe working conditions, understaffing and unreliable scheduling as some of the reasons why. Coming up, Texas men's basketball eyeing to keep things rolling tonight in the tournament, breaking it down ahead with Noah. And temperatures today more than 10 degrees above normal, spiking into the upper 80s. Crunch the numbers so far in the year. We are now in the midst of our ninth warmest start to a year on record. Precipitation has been a bit more normal, but certainly in the drier half. Your first warning forecast looking toward the weekend coming up. This KXAN News Podcast is brought to you by Shelf Genie. I'm Rosie Newberry from KXAN Studio 512. Considering replacing your kitchen cabinets? Struggling to find or reach things? Go to ShelfGenie.com slash Austin. Shelf Genie designs custom pull-out shelves for your existing cabinets, adding convenience and value to the most used room in your home. Shelf Genie custom pull-out shelves, everything in reach. Some anger after the president of West Texas a and University decided to cancel a student-organized drag show. It's gone from protests to now a new lawsuit. Students at the university filed a free speech lawsuit after protesting on campus in Canyon, Texas every day this week. According to the Texas Tribune, that lawsuit alleges President Walter Windler violated the students' First Amendment rights when he canceled a planned campus drag show. He said he believes such shows degrade women. The the students want the event reinstated and are asking the court to prohibit administrators from violating their rights to free speech. Now, prior to the lawsuit, two competing petitions have circulated on this issue. Over 10,000 people have signed a student petition in support of a drag show and a second online petition supporting this president's decision has around 4,500 signatures. All right, the Texas Longhorns are hitting the court tonight in Kansas City for the Sweet 16 round of March Madness. KXN's Noah Gross is here to tell us what to expect. Hey, Noah. Hey, Daniel. For the first time since 2008, as you said, Texas is in the Sweet 16 on the men's side of things. But as the team has said, they did not make it this far just to make it this far. Tonight they battle Xavier with the idea of moving on to the Elite Eight teams left. Longhorns in KC for the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. Let's go back to the Big 12 tournament a couple weeks back. Texas won. You see him there cheering without Timmy Allen. Now they're back in the tournament. Timmy Allen is healthy and they're in Kansas City. So with Allen on the court, he and the Longhorns open to keep that good KC juju going. Yeah, coming off a uh, good performance here. Um, for me personally, I'm just excited to be back on the floor and embrace the moment with my teammates. Um, we like it here in Kansas City, so we're just looking to carry that forward. Obviously, you know, we have some good memories playing in this arena. And, you know, we're definitely looking to carry that, you know, that comfortability, that confidence over into this weekend as well. Tip tonight at 845, probably a little later. First game, I'm sure, will go long. Winner faces Miami and Houston. Texas, a four-point favorite. Texas looking to continue making some history, Daniel. Let's get it done. All right. Thank you very much, Noah. And remember, you can get your Austin FC fix every Saturday on the CW Austin at 1130 a.m. and 5 p.m. with our show Vera the Lights. Austin FC's Michael LaHood and Adrian Healy break down the results and preview the next match. Better Than Lights is tomorrow on the CW Austin. First warning weather with Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans. Well, what a perfect afternoon and evening it has been here on Lake Austin. Pennybacker Bridge is locked up in traffic, but we're jealous of all these boats out here watching Dell Match Play under sunny skies. Live view always for you at home as well from our KXAN weather webcams. Find those on KXAN.com under the weather tab. It's a little breezy in Austin, but look at the hill country. These are sustained winds, 20, 25 miles an hour with higher gusts. This is a really dry and warm wind coming in. 5 p.m. temperatures taking a rare spike here at 87 in Austin, 87 in San Marcos. This is a west wind blowing downhill. We call that a downsloping wind, and just that fact alone really heats the air up. 
It's also causing some serious allergy problems. I hate to laugh. I'm feeling oak myself. It's very high, the worst count of the year so far. Mold and grass are spiking as well. Even cedar having a late season March spike up into the medium concentration. There goes the comma-shaped storm system that brought us a little bit of rain and a severe thunderstorm threat last night, at least in the hill country. The cooler, drier air pouring in behind it while we watch for a tornado outbreak in the deep south from that tonight. Back here at home, boy, it is going to be wonderful. The winds relax later this evening, 10.30 p.m. temperatures well down in the 60s, and the clear skies and dry air that you can feel outside right now, that's a recipe for a cooler than normal late March morning. We'll wake up with some 40s in rural areas, about 50 degrees tomorrow in Austin. Cloudless skies overnight, and look at this, all day tomorrow, this is the day to be outside. Not a cloud around, bone dry humidity, it's going to be a gorgeous start to the weekend. On Sunday, it still won't be a bad day, but just not quite as pretty. A little south wind returning as some uh, kind of a little front comes in from the coast. That could lead to mostly cloudy skies from mid-morning through midday, and a couple of these sprinkles will be possible as well. This is only a 10% chance of rain, still some breaks of sun, again, just not quite quite as beautiful of a day as what we're seeing now and what we'll see tomorrow. Match play tomorrow, amazing. 10 a.m. temperatures really comfortable at 63. Temperatures rise up to the upper 70s by early afternoon. NASCAR races on Sunday. There is a little 10% chance of a shower, but they're not going to be using their wet weather tires, I suppose. Temperatures still rise to 80 degrees with mostly cloudy skies through the day. High temperatures this weekend, I just showed you pretty warm and comfortable with low humidity. It is not summer yet. I know we've had a lot of heat and humidity recently. People are saying, is this it? Well, it's not. It's still March, and we're going to get a reminder of that next week with several days of cooler weather to look forward to before a temperature spike and a humidity spike starting next Thursday. Okay, tonight, 50 degrees with drier air pouring in under clear skies. Tomorrow, beautiful sunshine, northwest winds keeping the humidity low. High temperatures 82, but it's a very comfortable 82 degrees. There's a little slight chance of rain after another cool start on Sunday morning. Next week, a cool front arrives early, and that means several days of falling temperatures in the 70s or even 60s. We also have at least a low chance of a shower every day next week. Chances of spring thunderstorms appear possible next Thursday and Friday. We'll keep you advised. Download the KXAN weather app as severe storm season continues. Up next, a hockey team from Ukraine hits the ice, raising money for their home rink and getting a chance to have some fun. From war-torn Ukraine to the ice in Illinois, some young hockey players from Ukraine got a chance to have some fun hitting the ice and raise money to rebuild their ice rink. Lizzie Sales has more on the international youth batch. Right before the puck hits the ice, there's a friendly exchange between the Kharkiv Berserks and the Peoria Mustangs. But that doesn't mean the teams went easy on each other. The Mustangs were up 4-1 to one in the first period. For the 12-13 to 13 year old boys on the ice, it's not really about the score. Uh, we didn't have any tournaments in Ukraine for these kids uh, during this year when the war started. Uh, so now they have well, the opportunity to play, to live their favorite life, I suppose. <laughs> Katrina Manofa says the team had to leave their home city because of the war. They've moved from town to town within Ukraine, which is where her son started playing. The team was in Chicago raising money to rebuild their home ice rink in Kharkiv, destroyed by war. Then the Ukrainians made a surprise stop in Peoria. Even with just a few days' notice, the Peoria Youth Hockey Association jumped on the opportunity and scrambled to give these courageous players a River City welcome. We found out Sunday night. You got to send them home with something to remember their trip to the U.S., you know, so I thought it'd be cool if we got together. And they got a goodie bag, including Trefsker's cookies and a shirt to commemorate the occasion. But the real memento is the chance to play hockey and just be kids away from a war-torn country. That's his lifestyle. It's not just, well, inter an interest or something like that. It's lifestyle. So excited to play in this game tonight and to welcome these boys, give them their gifts, and, you know, just play a little hockey. Be a normal 12-year-old for a night. All right, well, tonight we have all new episodes of Lopez versus Lopez and Grand Crew. And then after that, we have an all new Dateline NBC until we're back with KXAN News at 10. And of course, you can join us an hour earlier for KXAN News at 9 o'clock on the CW Austin. Here's where to find us.
Thanks for listening to KXAN News Nightly. You can also listen to KXAN News Today every morning for more in-depth coverage of what matters most to you.